G'day all and welcome to Hardly a Week. It has been a while, so I, I was away, I actually took some leave, which was nice, and then I came back and kind of just got caught up in life. And I was thinking the other day that I haven't recorded one of these for a while because I was recording all of the monthly ones where I interview people, so I've got lots of those banked up, but I am glad to be back doing the Hardly a Weeks now and bringing you some of the cyber news that is around. So we're actually going to jump straight into analyzing a phishing email header. This I got from This Week in Forensics. Again, really good website that Phil Moore does. Has a lot of good links there. If you're unsure where to start, there's some really technical stuff. There's some really beginner stuff. I like this because there's lots of this out there. And I really want to start shifting towards personal safety with online scams because I think talking to people and from what I've seen, that's the next thing that's going to happen. Uh, as part of like a branch of other things that's going to happen, but this is what I think we'll see an uptick of uh, in the next few years. So it goes through some of the characteristics, urgent or alarming language, generic greetings, suspicious links, uh, what to look for, it talks about the risk involved, and then it goes through the more technical header stuff. So if you don't understand all this stuff with the headers, that's fine. This is a good read in itself, the characteristics. Uh, there's plenty of other websites out there that you can look at it. But if you are interested in the technical stuff and you want to go down that route, then you can start looking for key elements within the email header to look for why it's a potential scam. So a uh, really good read. There, as always, there'll be the links in the show notes for all these. If you're watching this as the short, uh, you can check this full video out on YouTube uh, and go there to see all the links. The next three things that I have uh, are just going to show, I haven't actually looked at any of these yet, but I bought them up because I want to kind of talk through it. And it came up in some of the searches. So I had the most interesting coffee catch up the other day where I was talking to this person who they had an ex who was just stalking them um, and they had no idea what to do. And even with all this information out there, there is just not support for the individual, I think, and uh, they were going through a real hard time. So they're talking to police, they're trying to uh, reset all their devices and all this stuff out here is great. But then how do you do this if you're non-technical and, and really make sure that your device is clean? So I'm actually thinking over the next few weeks, I'm going to be helping them. And what I want to do is use these hardly a weeks to talk through some of the things that we're going to be doing to not only back up some of the data that they have, but then also how they're going to go about making their new profile um, and trying to unlink it as much as possible from their personal identity to stop their uh, ex continually stalking them. So uh, this one really talks about um, if you've got an email and they've got access to it, make sure you start another private one. Changing all your passwords is always a good idea. Same thing for a compromise. Um, and then it also talks about saving all of the evidence you can. So if you can re record threatening phone calls, you keep all the text messages. Um, if you've got it in writing, that's super useful to then take to the police. Uh, if we go to this one, just go through a description of what cyber stalking is, how to spot it. Yeah, there's some more help here. Risk of cyber stalking. A lot of it's kind of like go to the police, talk to someone, but the police are super busy. Like, how do you do all the technical stuff yourself? I ha haven't found a good guide for that yet, and that's what I really want to look for. So here, like, don't engage, report to the police, document everything. Again, those three points, really good. Focus on your online security. Uh, lots of vice at good, safe online. So let's check out this link. Work through a cyber stalking action plan. Let's check these out. Let those around you, yeah. So generic tips. What we're looking for is like technical. We're looking for the technical goodness in all of this. Uh, number of impersonation cards. Oh, so this is a generic website. Become safe online. Self-help tool center. So maybe if we go here. This is what I mean. Like someone who's non-technical, it should not be this hard to go from a cyber stalking website into something else. So this gives you good generic tips, how to check your spoof phishing email. Let's see if there's a stalking one here. So again, there's not like a direct stalking link. Cyber stalking action plan. Let's see if this is any better. 
get expert help. Okay. Work with a specialist organization. And this is hard. Like there's not, from my knowledge, that many specialist organizations out there. And I, if you do know some, particularly in each country, like I know the US probably has a good base of professionals um, just based on the literature that's around. But yeah, I don't think it's in every country. So uh, make sure you physically contact the specialist charity. Again, understand the store's motivation. Yeah, again, if they've got really good technical capability, like what are you doing for this? Dawkins approach, access, resources, motivation. So this is getting a little bit better. Devices and accounts, we're looking here. So think about what devices you have, smart home technology, social media, money. So again, like entertainment, super important. There's like chat features through different entertainment things, like if you're into gaming, um, but if you've even got shared accounts with your Netflix, I think that's got locational services in it as well. So if you're traveling for work to a hotel, potentially uh, that could expose you. Confidentiality. Yeah, so I guess what you're really looking for is kind of like the step-by-step -step technical stuff that's easy to understand and follow, which is just not in here. And I guess that's why they're saying reach out to a, a professional to help. Um, but again, like it was just a super random conversation that I had that kind of ended up uh, me moving into that space. So anyway, I'd love to use these to talk about it. And we're going to talk about some of the technical stuff and where to go to set up accounts. Um, and I will also try and make it APAC focused. So we're going to be talking about the charities, um, maybe the different contacts through the police that you could go to, um, everything that you need to go to get support, feel safe and try and stop. Uh, this horrible thing that is potentially happening to you or someone else you know. Um, but that's it for this week. Uh, if you want more content, check out my YouTube channel, uh, grab the podcast from your favorite podcast app. And if you'd like to support the show, check out my website, hardlyadequate.com, where you can donate or link to any of my content that I have, which is nearly all free. So thanks everyone. And I will catch you again next week.